Welcome to How Things Are Made Podcast. I am Space Lord. I bring new life to podcasts as I brought to planet Earth approximately 5,000 years ago. I am the Lord of all space, and space is within me and because of me. All hail the illusion of time. All hail the false flag operation of the Large Hedron Collider. I made it, and I made them make it. The motion of atoms is my dog. <laughs> Orion is real. Orion forgot your birthday. There is no belt. The stars are too far away. Men cannot use star as a belt, but I do. In space, I have made sugar snacks. I have made sugar hot, but it will never burn. In space, I have made internet. The internet is also made hot with sugar. In space, I have made business. My business is hot. My business is sugar snack. My business is sugar snack on the ether blogs. You are to buy sugar snacks for being in space. It is convenient for you. It was convenient for you before. Before sugar snacks came from a store near the railroad. It saved the daylight, but now space is 01010011101, and you will buy sugar snacks there. You will not burn your mouth. Nothing is permitted. Euthoria is in space. Is the sugar snack business really that different than the internet business? You are the judge. Judge me. Judge space. Judgment for sugar and the internet. Today, we are joined by a man who is sensitive about hats. You are Raymond Gunn. Introduce yourself to space. Well, you can call me Ray. Have you been to these parts, Ray? I've been to them parts and these parts. Where are you? You don't exist, do you? I do. Would you like a sugar snack? I reckon I'd enjoy a nice pick-me-up. Would you like free access to the internet? The internet as once imagined, then it was a joke. And now, it is more real than once imagined. Now, internet? Is that what texting is? I got children who pay their allowance to Comcast so they can sell goods on texting. Are you texting me? Text is in space. Well, then sign me up. I always wanted to text, but I'm mighty thirsty. You got a space bar in there, too? There is a space bar in the internet. The fee is caramel. That reminds me of a joke. Do you mind if I tell you a joke, Space Lord? The internet was a joke. You have gone wrong. It is without space. Well, okay then. I'm just going to tell you. What's the difference between a caramel and a marshmallow? Both are hot sugar. A caramel won't make no friends at a campfire. Space is a series of campfires. The sun, the other suns, trillions of suns. Most are caramel, most are mellow. Caramel meal is rat poison, but it tastes good anyways. This is humor. This is the reason you exist in life, the internet, and in snacks. Uh, recently you shamed an audience because you felt insecure in your hat? What is your hat? Why do you put shame in hats? Now I ain't the one putting shame in hats. Correct. I'm responsible for putting shame in hats. Do you feel shame for hats? No, but, but that's what I got to say. I don't feel no shame for hats. In the year of our Lord Brian, there is no hat shaming. Hats are shame. Explain yourself. Now I know there is a bunch of good people looking to enjoy a music concert. And mark my words, I love a good show. You ever see Paint Your Wagon? Clint Eastwood sings in it. He was so young, he felt no shame in hats. That ain't my point. I'm just telling you that Paint Your Wagon is a great show that come from Hollywood. But that gets me to what I'm trying to say. Hollywood is made of hats. Your shame of hats is the shame. Now, I've been hearing about this ever since that nice European lady came to show us what the viola is. That night, I talked about being good people. I talked about shame. Boy, howdy, I know about shame. I spilled my guts about my country, but I spilled my guts about good people and hats. 
I am angered by your insecurity. Make sense or perish. Now hold on there, Space Larry. I got something to say. He <laughs> say it don't spray it, hoss. You truly know of shame. Speak of shame for hats. Like I was saying, I ain't ashamed of hats. I started that night talking about getting good people when I brought up hats. My voice split in two, then three, then it seemed like I didn't have no agency. I was like a horse in the rain. Continue speaking. You do not compel Orion's tears, nor his belt. This is not business. I don't know what you're talking about, Space Case, but that night, for some reason, when I mentioned hats and the shame that comes with hats, I wasn't talking about no political hats. I am a cowboy who likes a good hat. I'll travel halfway across the world to wear a good hat. A funny hat, a serious hat, a sad hat, all kinds of emotional hats, but not political hats. You do not condone political hats? Look, Spaceman. I'll condone hats from here to the sixth moon of Jupiter, but I don't condone political hats. Political hats make you crazy as a dog with an itch. Now, Space Damon, can I tell you about my real hat problem? Yes. Give me your emotions. Why do you know of Jupiter's sixth moon? If there was anything I was trying to say that night, is that, excepting political hats, of course, nobody should feel ashamed about wearing any other kind of hat. So long as they're expressing something that reflects one's own personality, what they love. Whether it's being silly or morbid or happy or whatnot, ain't nobody should have to be shamed for their own respectful personal expression. Political hats are bad. Self-expression is divine. Very well. Your argument is tenuous. This has been the introduction of how things are made podcast. Now, we will hear this speaking of hats and shame. I love you. I love you too, Space Face. When will I find true love? One will only find love in the internet business. Listen to the cowboy embarrass himself, and then listen to how things are made. Play tattoos. What is America? That might seem like a simple question. But I can assure you it's not. It seems today there's a whole group of people trying to redefine just what America is in the year of 2018. The year of our Lord, Brian. There was a time when I would have been first to say, well, everybody has a right to their opinion. But we all know that's just not true anymore. Is it? And I personally believe that that might be one of our major issues that lies at the foundation of why so many people are just plum ticked off, pissed off, up in arms, hooting and hollering, cantankerous, and just downright out of their minds towards people in power and people in groups and organizations telling us what to do, what we can't do, what we can say, what we're not allowed to say, what kind of hats we wear, and who is fit to get a cup of coffee or sit at a table and have a bite to eat without being harassed. You see, at one time, we used to call that kind of treatment to another person discrimination. That might be what we all know. You know, like when people say, and they today, and they refuse an individual wearing a uniform the privilege of grabbing a cup of coffee. Or when a gentleman sits at a cheesecake factory and is harassed, persecuted, because he's wearing a hat. I ain't here to talk about my hat. I ain't here to talk about much else, but I've done my hat. Because this is America, and I feel good about it. You feel good? Feel good about being American? Is it? Yep. 
Yeah. Major issues that lies at the boundary is in the year of 2018.